So, if you're new to the channel, then you may not know that I've mentioned Damien Lillard and his future with the Blazers before. But after the conclusion of the Summer League, I want to go into some real depth about the situation surrounding Portland and their superstar. So, if you don't know by now, essentially Portland is considered by many to be one of the possible prisons for NBA players, where they are either drafted or traded to the hellhole. And one of Portland's latest victims seems to have what many doctors would diagnose as Stockholm Syndrome, which is a coping mechanism to a captive or abusive situations. People will develop positive feelings towards their captors or abusers over time. Now, it seems that this exact thing is happening with Damian Lillard and the Blazers, because since being drafted there in 2012, Dame hasn't had much of any success in the playoffs, with his best achievement being a 2019 Western Conference Finals appearance, in which he and the Blazers managed to get swept in four games to the Kevin Durant-led Golden State Warriors. Now, I wouldn't go as far as to blame Dame completely for the team's postseason failures. I mean, sure, some of it is on him. But most of the criticism should be targeted at the organization's failure to build around Dame for more than a decade. First off, nearly all of his time there, Dame was paired with a really good secondary guard in CJ McCollum. But when the duo was together, there simply wasn't enough defense put around the guards for the team to hold up on that end of the court. And second off, let's talk about the coaching that was put around Dame. That's right, I'm talking about the coach Dame had his in, almost his entire time in Portland, in Terry Stotts. Now, I'll cut the guy some slack with the fact that he got the Blazers to the playoffs 8 out of the 9 times he was there, while being able to keep Portland above 500 for 7 of those seasons. But that's as much as I'll give him, because Terry Stotts has a lot more negatives than he has positives when we're talking about his time with and before we continue let me remind y'all to like the video and subscribe to the channel because it really helps with the growth now if you remember i mentioned earlier that dame and cj failed because they didn't have the defense around them well who do you think built the system with no defense that's right so you see terry stotts was not the one Okay, let's move on to present day. Portland has just won the Summer League, and I know to most people that doesn't mean much of anything. However, for people who are really invested and have a good understanding of the game, they know that winning the Summer League means something. It's a sign that your team has got one of the better young cores in the league with some pretty good depth, which is great for the Blazers because if I'm being honest, before the Summer League run, the 2023 campaign was looking pretty bleak for Portland because the only major moves they made in the offseason were trading for Jeremy Grant, drafting Shaden Sharp with the 7th overall pick, signing Gary Payton the 2nd, and re-signing Yusuf Nurkic, which are nice moves, but they aren't like enough moves to get this playing level team into the realm of championship contenders. You get what I'm saying? It's like... The team has potential to be great because I believe that Anthony Simons and Shaden Sharp have the potential to be all-stars in this league, but they aren't on the same timeline as Damian Lillard and Yusuf Nurkic. Like, half the team is about half a decade behind the rest of the team when it comes to where they are in their career. Which can be said for many other teams in the league, but... I think it's especially true for Portland, with Damian Lillard on the team. So the team's current status is looking like they aren't near a championship level, but what the Summer League showed me is that the young guns that I was questioning going into the season have proven me wrong, because at first I did think that the young players on the Blazers weren't ready to compete at the highest level, and I don't mean any disrespect by it because sometimes it does take these athletes a while to develop into the stars they eventually become let me be specific here 
with young guys, I'm talking about, you know, first off, would have to be Trenton Watford. And if he sounds familiar, it's because he spent three years playing for the LSU Tigers and just came off of his rookie year with Portland. But during this year's summer league is where I really feel as though he cemented his place as a possible role player. Watford became Portland's anchor during this tournament, becoming the second leading scorer on the roster, which is nice. Though the defense he displayed in these games is what I believe gives him a real shot at making an impact on the Blazers. Now, the next player on Portland that made a name for himself during this tournament would have to be Jabari Walker. He stood alongside Trendon on the front court to make for a deadly duo down low. And the way Walker was able to move around on the floor was quite impressive for a man of his stature. Plus, his offensive, offensive ability seems to be better than projected at this point in time. And that's why I think that the Blazers could be a, a real dangerous team heading into this new season. So if they fail, I don't think anything major will come from this because, like I said at the beginning of the video, Damian Lillard may just have Stockholm Syndrome at this point. And so, even if the team does fail again, I doubt he even bats an eye at the possibility of leaving. And what Dame calls loyalty, I would call fear. Fear from leaving a place he's felt comfortable and safe in for nearly a decade. And if he really wants to be a champion, I believe he must conquer this fear and move on. But anyway, that's all I have to really say about Damian Lillard. <sighs> Man, Kevin Durant better sign somewhere. This is like my fourth video saying this, but I swear to God, if he doesn't sign somewhere in the next week, I'm going to lose my mind because I've been waiting on this signing for a really long ass time. Okay, and it's like... Sure, I could talk about Buddy Heald maybe going to the Lakers, which I might just, uh, that might just be my next video. So if nothing happens, uh, I expect to see Buddy Heald to the Lakers next. Anyway, that's it. That's it. <sighs> see you on like three, four days, I guess. Deuces.